I get a lot of people who contact me and they're like, Mike, you have to check out this bad tab book. Uh, I can't believe how bad this is. You have to do a video on it. And sometimes I check out those books and they're not as bad as they make it seem. Maybe there are like three or four mistakes. But somebody said, man, you got to check out the Black Sabbath anthology book. And he was like, make sure it's the purple one because that's the one with all the mistakes. So I got the book, looked through it, and I was like, yeah, this guy's right. This book is full of a lot of mistakes and this is going to make a really crazy video. But it wasn't until I got to Iron Man that I was really shocked. I'm like, I can't believe what they did to Iron Man. And it hurt me inside because I grew up loving that song. It was the first song I heard from Black Sabbath. And there used to be a wrestling team called the Road Warriors back in the day. Uh, that used to come out to the intro of that song. So I remember hearing the bend in the beginning and just getting chills, you know? So that song is really special to me. So I wanted to do an entire video on just the Iron Man transcription so you guys can see uh, what happened here. So in the beginning, this is kind of just nitpicking, but it kind of starts us off on the wrong foot. There are two chord diagrams, an F5 and an E5. The F5 is fine. It says to play at the eighth fret of the fifth string and do a power chord. <laughs> That's great. But it says for the E5 to go to the 6th fret, which is incorrect. Because that's actually an E flat 5. But then I noticed that there's a gap between the E and the 5, so I thought, okay, there's probably supposed to be a flat symbol there. It just didn't get printed that way for some reason. So that I could live with, you know, it's not the end of the world there. But then I looked at the beginning and I'm like, okay, something is really wrong here. For that big evil bend I was talking about, they have a three in parentheses, followed by an arch, which usually means pull off or hammer on, and then a first fret. And so because this is really old tab, I think what they meant for that to be is a bend. And if you look above it, it has an R, which means release, from what I can tell. So they want us to bend the first fret of the sixth string to the pitch of the third fret and then release it slowly. Now that sounds okay, right? but I'm sure some of you already know why this is really, really wrong. Let's move to the main riff real quick. They say to go. Now there are a lot of things wrong with what I just played, but the biggest mistake is that that plus the bend I did earlier is in the wrong key. Everything I'm playing is a half step higher than the actual song. So I actually went through the rest of the tune and realized that every part of this transcription is off by a half a step. Everything is up. In order for this to be in tune with the album, you would have to tune your guitar down half a step. And I thought, okay, that kind of makes sense, even though it's wrong, but at least it would sound like the album if you did that. So I searched the entire transcription and nowhere on it does it say to tune down half a step. So that means anyone who learns this song out of the book is going to be playing a half step higher than the actual song. And I just imagine somebody learning it back in the day, the way the book says, and then like jamming with people and being a half step off. That had to have been really embarrassing. Okay, so how could this have happened? Here's my theory. I believe the transcriber listened to the recording, heard that cool bend in the beginning and thought, okay, it's like a low note that's being bent and then released. So they probably thought, okay, what's the lowest note I can bend and release on the fretboard? Uh, it's the sixth string first fret. Okay, let's do it. But wait, when I end here on the F, it doesn't sound like the recording. So I bet you the transcriber tuned everything down a half step to match it, finished transcribing the song, which is why the rest of the transcription is all too high by one half step, and then forgot to indicate it in the transcription that you're supposed to tune down a half a step. So it's like this comedy of errors that just resulted in chaos. Now what Tony actually does for the intro to get that bend, which the transcriber didn't seem to know, is that he goes behind the nut of the guitar and he pushes down on the sixth string and then releases it. So when you push down, it bends the string, bends the note, and then you take off the pressure to let it come down. So you do this. So it's actually a really cool technique to mess around with. Jimmy Page does this a lot too. So if the transcriber of this book would have known about that technique, they would have been like, okay, that sounds like the intro. There's that big crazy bend. And when I release it, it ends up being in the right key on the right pitch, which is E in this case. Then they would have went on to leave the guitar tuned as is, and uh, they would have transcribed it correctly as far as the key goes. Now they make a lot of other mistakes besides just everything being in the wrong key, uh, and we'll talk about that coming up. So now let's do the main riff again. So they have us starting on the fifth string, third fret. <laughs> but 
But on the real version, we're supposed to do that riff on the sixth string. That's a Tony Iommi thing. He likes to play everything as much as he can on the fattest strings to get the darkest, deepest tones. So the real way is supposed to be here. <laughs> Doesn't that sound a lot heavier? The other thing that the book got wrong is that they didn't add any slides. So it ends up sounding real herky-jerky, kind of like when a beginner tries to play this riff, it sounds like this. It's just not supposed to be that way. It's supposed to have that heavy, smooth feeling to it. Now, after the first verse, there's this really great circular riff that I love. They have us starting on the fifth string, third fret, and the way they have it written out, it's a little bit tricky and it makes it kind of awkward to play. So. See, so I had to reach down really quick and hit the sixth string first fret, immediately followed by an open A string. It's kind of a strange feeling when you play it that way. Now, if you do it the real way, it just rolls off your fingers in a cool way. When the real way is that much easier, it really hurts me because I think of a lot of beginners buying these books with high hopes and being like, oh, I can finally play these tunes. And then they're discouraged because it's actually written in a more difficult way than the real version. So a lot of the mistakes from here on out are because they're starting on the incorrect string. It just loses a lot of power like this riff. <laughs> instead of Now this really shoots you in the foot for the walk down into the solo. Here's why. The way the book has it, they have a starting here on the 3rd string 7th fret going Look how far down the neck we are. For the solo we have to jump according to them to the 8th fret of the 6th string. That's a big jump. Now, if you do it correctly, you would do this instead. See, I was ready for the solo because I was in the exact area for it. Now, I have to give them some credit. The solo was actually transcribed pretty well. There are a couple weird things, but uh, for the most part, it, the licks are correct. It's just off by half a step like we talked about earlier. Everything's gonna be. But uh, I'm just gonna play through the solo and I'll show you the weird parts that I noticed. <laughs> That's a little bit strange, it's not supposed to be that. Another very strange anomaly. It's like that note is nowhere to be found during that part of the solo. Tony's just rocking out doing this pentatonic stuff and all of a sudden they have us jumping for no reason to the high G. Kind of hard to play too. And then right here, instead of doing a bend at the third string, 12th fret, they have us doing a slide just out of nowhere. So you end up going. When you could just do a simple bend, which is what Tony actually does. Now this part is really infuriating for me because they're in the correct spot, kind of, except for being a half step off, at the end to do these little hammer-ons. But for the walk down that happens right afterwards, they want us to jump back to the third string, back to the incorrect part of the neck, and do the walk down. They had the perfect hint to tell them where it's actually played at the end of the solo. So in the real song, you're supposed to be going, but then you could start the walk down right from there. So it's crazy how the book made things so much harder to go into the solo as well as coming out of it. All right, so it just continues on with the same riffs in the wrong locations. We eventually get back to this uh, bend, which is incorrect. And then the last solo, which is a great solo because it splits off into two channels. So if you're wearing headphones, there's one in each ear. 
And it's funny, at the bottom there's an asterisk and it says left channel overdub not notated. So you just have to live without it, I guess. So isn't this the weirdest transcription of Iron Man you've ever seen? It's one of those things where I wonder how many people learned it this way and then jammed with people, realized that they were in the wrong key, and then uh, had to actually just quickly relearn it, move everything down half a step. And that's tough to do when you're just starting out on guitar and you're kind of memorizing fret numbers and all of a sudden everything changes. It had to have been tough for a lot of people. Okay, everyone, hopefully that was fun to watch and uh, somewhat entertaining and educational. I like to right the wrongs of the past uh, for others and for myself as much as possible to help you guys out. But uh, all right, we'll see you at the next lesson. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.